Hi, Karen. Hi, Laura. Hi, Myrna. How are you? Good. Happy Monday. Good. Yeah. How was the weekend? It was great. How about yours? Yeah, the weather is、uh, so nice. I really think last year we missed such a beautiful autumn, and these days people are catching up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just texted Yvette. Okay. I know Angelica had a doctor's appointment, so、okay. she's not going to be able to make it. Okay. All right. Well, I'm curious if the two of you have been、um, filling out the MREA quiz.、Um, no, I haven't. I only did it. I think the first day. Okay. Well, after today, let me see.、Um, we're doing pages. Yeah. So we should be able to fill two more out today. We can、um, look at it at some point together. Um, okay, so、um, what do you think, Myrna? You ready to get started?、Uh, yeah. Okay. So we're doing the two sections today.、Um, like, it, well, let me back up and tell Karen. I sent a text message out, but it bounced back because apparently we're out of、um, Twilio minutes with our office account. So, unfortunately, some people are probably forgotten. Um, but anyways, we're here. And we're going to have a good discussion, and we're doing、um, the section pages ninety seven through one seventy two. This is actually quite a bit to cover in one week.、Um, it's a really good、um, section, and、uh, where we're going to be going over what the three L's are, what the eight goal categories are, and then an introduction to the four models of the millionaire real estate agent. So, and Mir Myrna, you volunteered to be my co-host today. So,、um, what? Tell me, why don't you go ahead and share what stood out for you? Um. So, starting. Uh, where are we? Um. So, um, I really, I mean, I really enjoy reading about leverage. Um, and I think just realizing, like. When you get to that point,、um, and then realizing how to hire people.、Mm -hmm. um, on page one of four, it talks about who's going to do it, how will this get done, basically, and what will they do with the tools. So I feel like you have to kind of like be ready to not just say I need people, but kind of think about the overall and the long term on how you're gonna train them. Yeah, and share with them like your mission and why you're doing what you're doing, so everybody can be on the same page. Yeah. Um. And and actually help those people grow with you. Yeah. Yeah. So that you don't have to keep rehiring, right? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um. So leverage is the of the three L's that we talk about in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. Leverage is the third L. Why do you why do you think it's the third L?、Um, because I think like you, the other two is listings and leads. So I feel like you have to become good at leads and listings. To like the book says, to a point where you can no longer like service your clients, then at that point you do the leverage. Yeah, because you you there's only one of you, and so you need some help. Yeah. 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 And so, and what I have found、um, with all the agents I've worked with over the years is that people、um, think they need leverage sooner than they do, or at least in the form of a person.、Um, yeah. A lot of times, the first type of leverage you need is more of a system or a tool, because they talk about there's two types of leverage: there's people leverage, and then there's systems and tools leverage. And now、yes. there's so many things that we can automate that if we just slow down a bit to just set things up and get it automated,、um, many times that that helps us before we、um, have to hire somebody. Hiring somebody is expensive, so、yeah. and then you have to ask yourself: Do I have、um, 
Am I, am I ready for that in my business? Do I have the money to spend on hiring somebody? I don't know if you guys, I'm in the office right now and there's some kind of construction going on. So I hope you guys can't hear that. It's very noisy above me right now. Mm -mm. No, we can't hear it. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, Yvette has a listing appointment right now with the client, okay. so she won't be able to make it. Um, thanks for checking on that. Sure. So, and the, I think the interesting, so what else, Myrna, what else was, um, jumping out for you in these sections? Um, the other thing that I realized was that um, to help you think a million, you should bear in mind that re that receive a million may well begin with your higher, uh, you hire your first great um, administrative, uh, I cannot even say it. I'm an administrative person. So I guess the person that kind of helps you administer, like manage everything, right? Your admin, yeah. Your admin, yeah. Um, and in one of the, I forgot what page it was, but basically, um, the person that's an agent hired back in the nineties, I think after 30 years, she became like his CEO. So once he received yeah. the million, someone else is basically managing the business yep. for him, yep. which I was like, Oh my God, that's so awesome because you're the owner, but now you're just like, it's your company, but basically someone else is working for you. Yeah, that's and when you're you, making a million. That's when you're at the seventh level. Yeah. Yeah. So that was pretty yeah. cool. And and pretty cool that you could do such a good job hiring at the beginning that that person grows with you and stays in the business with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, what else? Um, and then I... It was really good to think, at least for me, now that I'm starting um, to realize that I look at the goal numbers and actual numbers, my background is in accounting. So when I was reading all that, I was like, oh my God, this is so awesome. <laughs> um, it resonated with you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. The whole numbers, like knowing how much money, you, how many appointments you need, how yeah. many listings you need. And how having more listings will give you more business than actually having more buyers. And why is that? Why are, why do we focus on listings? Uh, because the listings um, will give you buyers because they'll come to your listings. But also um, when you do listings, then you door knock and you send postcards. So you do, I feel like having a listings, you put position yourself in ways that you cannot position yourself as a buyer, right? right? Because you're working with one client, you show them homes and that's it. But with the listing, you have more um, exposure to the neighborhood and uh, a greater, um, I think, exposure to so many people um, that in clients. marketing, yeah. 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 Yeah, if you're only working with buyers, then you're always waiting for a listing to come around. Yes. If you have the listing, you're just waiting for the buyers to show up, which in our current market is a done deal. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it gives you the exposure to get, for every listing, you should get another listing out of it. Mm -hmm. And you should be able to get another, get another a buyer out of it. Buyer, yeah. yeah. And you can't, if you're just focusing on buyers, you might get another buyer, but are you getting any listings? And so you're always waiting for the listings to show up. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, now I need to focus on listings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They kind of made it really clear now. I was like, oh, this is what they're talking about listings. So yeah. Yeah. When we dive next week, we're going to be diving into the economic model more, which is knowing your numbers. And it'll make even more sense um, when you dive into it, why it's so important. And, and then also focusing, okay, for the amount of money I want to make, Mm -hmm. let's, just, let's just say it's 500,000. Let's say you guys are on the path to a million and your first number you want to hit is 500,000. Um, you know, how many of those need to be listings and listing sides and how many of those need to be buyer sides mm -hmm. for you to hit 500,000. So we're going to dig into those numbers more next week. And what I love about it also is that it also encourages you not just to figure out how many it really all starts with lead generation, 
Mm-hmm. And then converting to appointments, either seller appointments or buyer appointments, um, which converts into written agreements, which converts into contracts. So those conversion rates are really important too. And I know I touched on that a bit last week in the class that I taught too, um, which the class I taught was a combination of the economic model and the lead gen model. Yeah. For those of you who are taking business planning clinic next week, um, you're, you're really going to dig into those numbers. Okay. Yeah. But I think it's really good to know, um, down to the numbers and the detail of how many listings you, appointments you should have, how many yep. break it down by year, month, especially planning yep. for 2022 mm-hmm. to give you a better sense of how much money do you want to make and how, what is it that you need to do, right? To get to those right. numbers. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going backwards. So if you yeah. have a goal of say, I want to, I want to close 24, um, units by the end of the year, then I want, you need to back it up. Okay. Well, and then you start creating your 411 plan around it or your, and your GPS as well. Um, so 24 means how many a month? Uh, it will be two a month. Yeah. Two per month. And then you back into, okay, well, you know, as we start planning, because guess what, uh, is it tomorrow? The four, Well, the fourth quarter starts, maybe it's next Monday. Is yeah, we're in fourth yeah. quarter. And so if, since we're in a quarterly business, um, you know, say your goal is I want to close 24 uh, units by the, by the end of 2022, you start planning ahead for that now because we're in a quarterly business. So what you start working on now shows up in January. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And so what do you have identified already? Um, you know, what do you have identified to get so that you know if you need to do, if you're going to do 24 transactions next year, what two are you going to close in January? And what two are you going to close in February? What two are you going to close in March? Those March. are things that you start looking at right now. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that they mentioned too was if you choose to track only two areas of your business, track your leads and your listings. Why do you think that is? Um, because I feel like by tracking it, then you'll know, right? Like you can measure it. What's working, what's not working, I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, if um, you take a look at all the goal categories, if you guys go to page 109. Oh yeah, the uh, the nine. The eight goal categories. eight goals, yeah. If you don't have leads generated and listings, you're not going to have any of the others. Yes. So those are the bottom. Those are the foundational ones, <clears throat> excuse me, that you have to have in order to have any of the other things. Mm-hmm. It always starts with that triangle that leads, listings, leverage triangle has to start with leads because the leads get you the listings. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> excuse me. And then when you have so many listings that you don't have enough time to service everything, then you're moving into leverage. Yeah. <clears throat> and do and they talk about listings as he calls them buyer listings or seller listings, which I think mm-hmm. is, it's a little weird, but that's just how he breaks it down. So he, yeah, he about listings, yeah, he's talking about both sides of the business. Yeah, yeah everyone, anyone else, feel free to chime in on things that stood out for you. We're we're in pages 97 through 172. Pages 97 through 118 are about the three L's, which we were just talking about, leads, listings, and leverage. And then the eight goal categories, which are in, which are just very quickly highlighted on page 109. And then on pages 128 to 172, it's an introduction of the four models. Mm-hmm. Does anybody have any um, things that stood out for them? <clears throat> There's a, another thing that's brought up in this section um, about the 80-20 rule. Oh, yeah. And I think it starts on page 97, actually, is Seven, where you yeah. start talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
What is the 80-20 rule? How, why is that important in a sales business? 80% of results come from 20% of the uh, clients. 20% of your activities, yeah. Activities. Yeah. yeah. So when you think about, um, um, there's so many ways the 80-20 rule plays out in real estate. One of the ways I like to point it out is that 20, 80% of the business is usually done by the top 20% of the agents in a market. That's when mm. we're looking at it. Um, the cream of the crop, cream always rises to the top. So the, the top 20% are usually doing 80% of the business because they're focusing on the right activities so that they're get, gaining the business. And then the other way you look at it in your own business is what are those 20% activities or we call them big rocks? What are our big rocks um, that we need to focus on to get 80% of our results. Mm -hmm. And so what would the 20% activities be? Myrna, you just talked about it. Uh, lead generation and appointments. Yep, it's just conversion rates. Leads, 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 which gets you to appointments, would get, which gets you to contracts written. If we don't have that, we don't have a business, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know, one of the things that what, as I work with so many agents comes up for me all the time is agents usually either have a lead generation problem. A lot of times you're just not generating enough leads. You're not doing enough activities. And I know I talked about in the, that in the class that I taught last week. So first that's where you got to ask yourself, am I doing enough lead generation to hit mm -hmm. the number? If you've set a goal, are you doing enough lead generation to hit that goal? And then the second part is, what's your follow-up look like? So if you are doing enough lead generation, what's your follow-up look like? And then from there, with your follow-up plans, how well are you doing at converting? Are you converting them into appointments, which then converts into contracts, which is skill-based? So how's your skill? And are you working on that part? And then if you're generating enough leads that you don't know what to do with, you don't have enough time for, then what do you need? If you're generating enough leads that you don't have enough time for it all by yourself, what do you usually need next? Then you leverage an yep. assistant. Yeah. You need leverage. And then you do, in, you go into a buyer's. What, and so what's the first type of hire you should make? Alan Wang talks about this when he teaches his classes. Um, I think it's an assistant, right? Yeah, an admin. Yeah. An admin, yeah. And a lot of people make the mistake of hiring a buyer's agent first. Agent, yeah. Which means you're paying, you're splitting a commission with them, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just say an admin is $60,000 a year. Do you know how many commissions that is? Mm. That you're splitting with, with a buyer's agent? A couple, maybe? Yeah, three to four, probably. Three to four, maybe, yeah. Two to three, so yeah. if you're hiring a buyer's agent first, you're going to quickly be paying that buyer's agent more than you're paying an admin. Does that make sense? Yeah. Whereas the admin can take, so, so that you can focus on that 20% of your business, what would the admin be focusing on? The 80%. They would be taking over the 80% activities that are not money-making activities for you. Activities so that you can focus on the 20% money-making activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when you start to build your weekly, your daily and weekly plan of action, your daily weekly job description, which we call a 411 plan, you're focusing on your 411, it's gonna be 20% activities right? Mm -hmm. And not 80%. It's the 20% money-making activities. Yeah. Laura, what is a, a full one-one plan? Oh, 
That's a great question, Karen. I'm glad you asked. So in uh, Keller Williams, we have two planning tools that we use all the time. And one of them is called a GPS and the other one's called a 411. And they're just catchy titles, but the GPS stands for your goal, your priorities, and your strategies. GPS, goal, priority, strategies. And um, so you usually set one goal for the year, and then you create some priorities underneath that goal and some strategies under each priority to hit your goal. And then that can easily be moved into what we call a 411, which is more of a daily and weekly action plan. So 411 stands for four weeks in a month, and then what is the monthly goal, and then what's the yearly goal, one and one. So one for a yearly goal, one for a monthly goal, and then four, what are the goals for the for each week of the month, which again then turns into more of your daily action plan. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, it's really a it's really a one one four. It's one goal for the year, one goal for the month, and then one goal for each week. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. I think I believe that when I emailed you guys the um, handouts for the class, I I dropped in the attachments a GPS for you and a four one one for you to take a yes, look. Yes, you did. Yeah. So the second part of what we were talking about this week is the four models. Mm -hmm. And that starts on page 128. Actually, I love it on page 121 um, before it even mm -hmm. goes into it more. If you go to page 121, I actually wrote all over this page. Um, it talks about the four mar models actually starting on page 120. Um, at the top of page 121, it says the economic model is a formula that shows you how to plug in your specific numbers. So if you highlight economic model and then highlight numbers, that's the economic model. And then mm -hmm. the second model, the lead generation model, is the specific approach you must take to systematically generate a specific number of leads. So the, the word is approach. So economic model equals your numbers, lead gen model equals your approach, and then the budget model is an outline of the specific budget categories you should track and the percentage of your gross revenue you should spend in each of them. So that the budget model is your budget for your business. And mm -hmm. then the organizational model is the specific staff positions you will need to fill and the job responsibilities they will, they will be given as your business grows. So, the organizational model is staff or leverage. So I wrote in there numbers, approach, uh, owning your business. It's So the one of the things about the budget model is that most real estate agents don't realize that you own a small business. And so the budget model helps you become a smart business owner. Okay, mm. That you're focusing on your numbers and that you're leading with revenue, not expenses which is a big part of that. Yeah. What does that mean when we talk about leading with revenue versus leading with expenses? You only spend money that you have. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You spend money after you have it, which is why at Keller Williams, we work with our new agents to help you um, market yourself in very inexpensive ways first. Mm -hmm. That you're, you know, because we want you to make some money first. You should be making money before you're spending all that money that you don't have yet. Does that make sense? And then you budget it like a certain, there, there's a lot of budget numbers in this book that show mm -hmm. you what percentage of your budget you should be spending in each category. talks about the hobo shack and then the house built on a solid foundation that goes back to the very beginning of the book where there was the triangle and it was the the creativity over models or oh yeah where the triangles upside down that's more of a hobo shack mm -hmm. so in this force what in the introduction of the four models section what are some things that stood out for you guys
one thing comes to my mind is um, they talk about um, uh, three L's. The first L is listing, um, which they say it is very important. It's just like the um, your uh, you should focus on um, getting more and more leads. Um, but yeah, the first L is leads. The second L is listing. Oh, the second L is listing. Yeah. Um, so, um, but while as a new agent, usually we will have more like buyers. And in the book, it said like, um, you should focus on uh, more listings and sellers, then you can better manage your time. Um, so how can we just balance that? Because as a new agent, usually you won't have so many leads, uh, let alone listings at the very beginning. So you usually work with a lot of buyers and some buyers are interested, some are not that interested. So is there any suggestions? Raymond, do you have any thoughts on that? I would, I will always ask if the uh, buyer knows someone who is thinking about selling their home. That is the a very easy conversation. Uh, a lot of times that the, they would know someone who's thinking about uh, selling or uh, they may be selling something. You know, I, I have a, I have a buyer who wants to buy in the Millbrit area and they wanted to sell their home uh, in the South Bay to move up there. So you easily when someone asks you about how's the market, uh, mm -hmm. the first thing you say, well, the market is gray and this is what's happening. And the second thing is that, uh, are you thinking about buying or selling? And usually, that will open up more opportunities or questions. And if they don't know anybody, you know, as uh, you know, I, I would love to uh, help you if you have a particular uh, area that you're interested in, uh, I can do some canvassing in that area and help you find uh, a seller, you know, and that would generate you know, a, a uh, marketing piece to the market area and say, hey, what uh, are you thinking about selling? I have this particular couple, they really wants to move into the area and this is what they are ready to do. Ready to do. So, you know, um, I mean, uh, it's, it's just on the top of my head, that's what I would do if uh, I'm talking to a buyer. Yeah, thank you. It's it, Karen. I I would actually say that unfortunately, I think that's um, I hate to use the word trap, but a trap or a mistake that many new agents fall into is that you think that you're not qualified to work with sellers yet, that you haven't done enough. So, it's really more about shifting your focus on mm -hmm. working with sellers, which is what Raymond was just talking about. For every person that you're talking to, um, is there a seller conversation in there? Do you know anybody who's um, who's thinking about selling in this area? And so even if you're working with buyers right now, I just posted in our um, uh, in our um, closed Facebook group a class that's being offered Wednesday morning at nine on um, golden letters. And I highly encourage you to, to jump on that class. It's being offered at nine o'clock. Um, it's really about, even if you have buyers that you're working with, are you out there looking for the listing for them? Are you just waiting for it to show up on the MLS? The top agents aren't waiting for the listings to show up on the MLS. They're going after those listings. So like Raymond was just saying, where does your, Raymond, where's your buyer want to move to? Uh, they Milbury? want to Milbury. 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 So the active listing agent is up in the Milbury area looking for a listing before it even comes on the market. They're sending, they know what neighborhoods the buyer wants to live in. They're sending golden letters to the that neighborhood. They're door knocking. They're looking for the listing. Mm -hmm. Even if that buyer doesn't actually purchase that one, let's say they door knock the neighborhood. And from the door knocking of 200 homes they do, they find out two people that want to sell. 
And even if their buyer doesn't even want to buy those two homes, they've just found two listings that they can sell to another buyer. So I would recommend to you that every class you take is a listing-based class and you're learning listing skills, you're pr practicing the listing paperwork, you're practicing your listing presentation, and you're telling yourself you're a listing agent. This entire book, um, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, starts with a bottom foundation of what? What's the first thing that you get encouraged to do to um, do as an um, in the bottom foundation of this book. Think a million. Think. Think a million, yeah. Think a million. So it starts with how you think. Good job, you guys. Starts with how you think. And um, you got to start thinking, I am a listing agent. I'm a listing agent. I'm attracting listings. All your affirmations that you say, you give yourself that self-talk. You take every listing class you can take, every conversation that you're in, you um, focus on what listings you can get out of it. All of the social media marketing that you're doing, make it be listing focused. If mm -hmm. you don't understand what that means, that means you're missing a class that you should take that can teach you how to do that. That would be my thought. It doesn't mean don't work. It, I think a lot of times buyer's agent work, work with buyers at the, or sorry, new agents work with buyers at the beginning because frankly, they're less expensive. They take more of your time Listings take a little more of your money because you've got to add photography and marketing to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but buyers take a lot more of your time than listings do. Yeah. So yeah, the, it's the, shifting the, that focus. Yeah, in the long run, the listing always pays. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can you can take le 10 listings and spend half yeah. the time to 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 work on them. Mm -hmm. I, I think the other the other thing I, I, I forgot to mention is that. Because we have a, such a, uh, a high appreciating market in the last couple of years, if I were looking in a, in a marketplace, uh, like a geographic uh, submarket, and I will go back three or four years and look for the uh, expired listing or withdrawal listing. Yeah, there you go. And, and 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 go call and and cold call them or door knock on them and says, hey, the, you know the market has gone up uh, more than you know 30, 40 percent since you last uh, put your home on the market. Uh, if we can get you a much higher price than you than you were listed at, would you be interested in selling? You know that's a that's a very easy uh, target, and most agents never thought of doing it. Yep, excellent. Does that also, help if you're doing um, if you're doing like an open house, instead of just showing up for the open house, I think the other thing that we started doing is we door knock in the morning, put our signs out and invite the neighborhood um, to come to the open house and just talk about the market. People are like, oh, we didn't know this. Yeah. So I think it's door knocking and putting in, you're putting your face in front of the clients that you you otherwise you wouldn't meet. Right. And how can you help them in other ways? Yeah, when you when you're hosting an open house, you're actually being interviewed by the people that walk in the door. They're looking at you like, why would I want you to be my agent? Yeah. And when neighbors come in. Typically, neighbors come in because they might want to sell their house too, and so they're comparing the open house house to their house. And they're also looking at you as if, why would you be a good listing agent or not? Or they may know somebody that wants to buy a house in the neighborhood, which is the other reason neighbors come in. Yeah. And I think um, just being able to ask for, for them to think about you when it comes and just say at the end, you know, like yesterday, uh, not Saturday, we went for an open house and I started talking to one of the neighbors and we got into talking about trust. So I told him I would refer him to a state planning attorney. So I feel like coming with a sense of value, how you can help them. And at the end, he's like, thank you for all the information. He's like, if I know of anybody without even me asking, he said, if I know of anybody who's looking to buy or sell, I'll call you. So a lot of times I feel like people just appreciate what you're doing for them that you don't even have to ask to be, you know, to keep them in mind. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and Myrna, you have a goal when you do open houses of how many relationships are you going to create during the open house? Yeah. Right? 
you have a goal Mm -hmm. and And that's why we yeah we started door knocking because i'm like if we get let's say five or ten people but if we door knock that means we're having more people yeah in my class last week, I said to you, if that's going to be part of your one of your lead generation efforts, no matter what it is, open houses, farming, networking, be the best at it. Be mm-hmm. better at it than everybody else. Really work on your skills. So, okay. Are, is there, are there anything else that's standing out for you guys on those four models? Again, the four models that that we, that um, in this section of the book we're going over, it's kind of an overview of each model. And then the next few times we meet, we're gonna be digging into those models in more detail. Was there anything that stood out for you guys um, with the four models? I, I have a question for you with these four models. Can you do these models out of order? No. Why not? Um, because one kind of relates to the other. Like, I think if you don't start with... Um, the economic model? Yeah, the economic model. Then um, I don't, don't think you can your move numbers, forward. you don't know your numbers, how do you know what know. your approach is going to be, right? Yeah, because basically the economic model tells you what you should be... Um, doing in a sense when it comes to numbers appointments all that stuff to me to me the only one that actually is kind of overall is the budget model you have to focus on the budget model from the very beginning of your business all the way through to wherever you're taking it so that one I would say is just sort of an underlying one Mm -hmm. Uh, but you can't start for example with the organizational model unless you're ready for that um by focusing on the economic model and the lead gen model first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, Laura, Laura I, I came from the old school, so I, I just find this uh, book very, very refreshing because uh, when I started, I don't have this book. I don't have this blueprint, you know? Um, Me either, I didn't either. <laughs> yeah, so, so when I start, Basically, they hand me the uh, listing book and uh, reverse directory and said, go find a buyer and a seller. So yeah. I started with the lead gen model. I don't know anything about the, you know, the economic model or the yeah. budget model or organization model. I think this is uh, it, it's a really uh, a great advancement in, yeah. in our training to have all these things so you can think very methodically, but I'll be honest with you. I, I wish I uh, started a business today <laughs> and have all this knowledge yeah. instead of going through all the trial and error right. for 30 yeah. years. Yeah. And Raymond, that's when you and I meet in our um, one-on-one meetings or two-on-one meetings. That's why I'm always asking you guys what your numbers are first, right? Right. right. Yeah. So, but I, I think I think, yeah, to me, I, I made a mistake of starting somewhere in the middle instead yeah. of starting from the top. And that's, that goes back to, I think that's one of Gary Keller's most important points he's trying to point out in this book. And it's why this book has resonated with so many real estate agents over the years is because we don't, you, you don't get told you're, an actu- you're actually a business owner. When you start with a real estate career, you only have to take three classes to get into this career and pass a test. Three classes and you pass a state exam and you get started. And that's when the education really starts. We all know that the three classes aren't really doing much to educate you. It's once you get into this career is when the education really starts. And um, very few companies um, actually say to you, you're a business owner. Let's look at your business. And let's dig into this. What I find is really interesting is there's a lot of sales careers out there, especially where we live, high tech sales all over the place. And if you've ever been with a a tech company or any sales company that's selling something, you know, they have, they sit down every week and they have numbers they have to hit. And it's more of a group effort, right? 
um, and they had the board with all their numbers that you're supposed to hit and, and strategies and they practice together, they do their scripts together. And in real estate, we're, because we're all really independent contractors and, we're, and we run our own individual independent businesses, um, there's not so much of that camaraderie that happens that would happen if you were in a different sales company, which is I think why Keller Williams, that's our approach is to really work with you guys um, to make sure you know from the beginning that you own a business and there is a method and a way to do this the right way and there's a way to do it the wrong way or lots of ways to do it the wrong way, mm -hmm. right? And so that's why we have classes like Ignite because Ignite is more of, okay, let's get these, let's work on our numbers together. Let's practice scripts together. Let's practice our presentations together so that you're building the skills to be successful. Not very many companies do that for you though. And Ray, you've just, you know, took you a while to just like it did me. I was in the business for 13 years before I found Keller Williams. Absolutely. Kudo to that. <laughs> Anything else you guys that stood out for you in this part? Um, on page 141, they talk about referrals. Mm. Oh, I love this part. Okay. Um, and I really, really, uh, it was really eye-opening. I like how to, um, I guess, get referrals and understand like how to, how to do it, I guess, and how to set them up like the 33 yeah. touch. Um, yeah, educate, ask for help, and then reward. You always reward, yeah. you reward the referral to you, not the closing, right? Because you want more mm -hmm. referrals. So like, let's say someone refers you business and it takes a year to close that business. And you, you send them a thank you for that referral a year later. They're, it's so, it's that law of emotional proximity again. It's so far away from the actual event that they're going to forget about it. So what you want to reward is the, um, the act of referring so as soon as you get a referral from somebody, you thank that, thank them right away for that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's somewhere in here that talks about lead. Uh, where is it? It's lead receiving versus lead generating. Oh yeah, I think it was at the beginning of the chapter. I mean, of the section we're reading. Of that section, okay. Um, What's the difference between lead receiving and lead generating? So lead generating is basically um, not waiting for them to come to you, but you actually go in and get the leads. Yeah. Uh, so that would be like maybe networking, door knocking, doing all those activities. Yeah. Then waiting for people to think about you and give you a call and say, hey, I have a referral for you. Lead receiving happens more from your sphere of influence or your database. So for those of you who were in my class last week, I had the four-legged stool, right? Yes. And the one leg of your stool is your database and your sphere of influence, right? Mm -hmm. And then your other legs of your stool are whatever lead generation sources you've chosen to do and implement in your business, right? Yeah. So that's lead generating, those legs. Lead you can also generate leads from your sphere of influence because they may raise their hand and, and need to buy or sell as well. But the other thing is they're usually referring you business. And so that's more where the lead receiving comes from. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, a lot of people just focus on their database, their sphere of influence. And so they're just focusing on the people they already know versus generating lead generating and meeting people they don't know yet. The have not mets, right? There's the mets and mm -hmm. the not mets. I don't know yeah. if I got too far ahead or if that was part of this section or not. I think it was part of this section, wasn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Is it page 138? Mm, I think so. 138 talks about, you know, prospecting versus marketing more. Okay. Um, I know it's in here too. I feel like we just went over that part, but I'm not finding the exact page.
but it is this this section. Yeah, so page 143 talks about your Mets and your not Mets too. Yeah. Um, would you guys like to look over the quiz? Sure. Okay, so let me pull that up. I think I have it here for you. We should at this point um, with this quiz that I also sent everybody, you should be able to answer the first four um, of the quiz, one through four. So number one was on page 44. It's what are the four stages of growth on the path to a million? Think, earn, what's the other uh, one? Think, earn that to receive. Right. And we did the think a million section. Now we're on the earn a million section. Yeah. Great. So that's the four stages. Think first. Always starts with think. Then earn. Then net. Then receive. And then what are the three L's? You guys know this. Starts on page forty-two. What are the three L's? Leads, listing, leverage. Yep. In that order. You have to have the leads in order to get listings, and you have to have leads and listings before you need leverage. And then number three, what are the four fundamental models of the real estate sales success? That's what we've been talking about. So page 120 is where it starts, but we've just talked about it for the last half hour. Economic model. Um, lead generating model, lead gen model, budget model, and the organization model, organizational model. And it has to start with the economic model, right? You have to know your numbers first. And then the next one we should be able to answer by now is what are the three key areas of the economic model? Page 130. I'm giving you guys the pages. <laughs> Starts on page 130. Focus on the number that you must hit, focus on the appointments, and focus on the conversion rates. Right. Which is what we talked about um, today. And so you guys, next week when we meet, we're going to be going over pages um, 172 through 180, 192. We're going to go over in more detail the economic model and the lead gen model. Goes very much hand in hand with the class I taught last week. So what would be really great for you guys to work on, um, because the first part you're going to work on is focusing on your numbers, the numbers you want to hit to hit your goal. So um, on page 181, it's, it's, um, it says to work backward to the number of appointments per month. So you want to start with what's the goal. So for example, today I said, maybe you want to, you want to earn 500,000 in real estate. We want you to work back to how many, in order for me to, to um, earn 500,000 in real estate, how many closings do I want to have? In order for me to have that many closings, how many contracts do I need to sign? And in order for me to have that many contracts, how many appointments do I need to set? And in order for me to have that many appointments, how many leads do I need to generate? So you're going to work backward with some conversion rate percentages. So it'd be really good for you guys to work on that. And then I'll have it drawn out next week as well um, of what it would take actually to get to a million um, in our current markets with our price points. The, the price points that are in the book are for national averages and they're also out of date because this book was written a while ago. And so what you wanna do is you wanna take a look at that math and you wanna change it to, even if you just easily use a million dollar price point around here, just to make the math really easy, just use a million dollar price point, which is actually a little bit low for us right now. Um, but it will make the math easy. You can focus, you can figure out based on a million dollar average sales price um, and a goal of whatever your goal is. Doesn't have to be a million, doesn't have to be 500,000. Maybe your goal is 
350, maybe your goal is 200 or 150. Focus on the first goal that you wanna hit and then work backwards with those numbers. Does that make sense? I have a question. Yeah. So uh, looking at these numbers, I always feel that we are either over lazy or over spoil because of our price point. But we're high volume. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just wondering how how these ratio will work for our marketplace as compared to the national market. It's a great question. And I was just about to say that in business planning clinic next week, they're definitely going to um, be looking at all of this too. So if you guys have already done your homework math by yeah. next Monday, then yeah. next Tuesday, when you go to business planning clinic, you're already going to be ahead. And I'm certain, well, I'm fairly certain that Karen will take the average math for the country, but she'll also look at the math for this, for our area. And I think that's a great question to ask in business planning clinic. Um, I can tell you what most trainers have said to me at KW is that we are spoiled because we have such high volume here. We don't try as hard as other parts of the country. I don't yeah. know if that's true or not, because there's certainly people in other parts of the country that I firmly 100% believe take really, really good care of their clients, even if they're doing 250 units a year, right? I believe that they have, because they've put systems and models and leverage in place so that they're taking really, really good care of their clients so that they're getting that much more business. Because I've heard, I've heard people argue that, well, we have to take way better care of our clients around here because the price point's so much higher. Um, and I firmly believe that agents all around the country are taking just as good care of their clients as we do here. Um, I think that Maybe they're hungrier because the, the money doesn't go as far in other areas. They don't get paid as well as we do here. And so for them to hit the numbers that we need to hit or the numbers, to, you know, say they want to be a millionaire real estate agent, their numbers are so much higher than ours need to be around here. It's really about it's really about 100 units around here to hit a million. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. The, the second question, I, uh, I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but on the uh, page 145, mm -hmm. uh, they talk about the 8, 8, and the 33, and the yeah. 12, correct? And, you know, I, I believe what uh, Gary is talking about, you need to do the A touches in eight weeks, but I couldn't figure out what do you do? What do you say in that eight weeks? Are you calling them every week and says, hey, are you ready to put your home on the market? Oh, it's it tells you what to do on page 146. It's yeah. spelled out there. So it's, there's different things it's telling you to do. The whole okay. point of the eight by eight is to solid is to figure out who, let's say you met a person at an open house. Right. And I've heard it called. 12 days of pain now where people are reaching out 12 days in a row with an open house lead or, or an online lead. It remember Ray right back to that, that bullseye I drew where it's the quick conversion. Mm -hmm. So the whole point in an eight by eight campaign is to um, figure out who's serious and who isn't so that you meet them at an open house, you get their information, you stay in touch with them you're either going to convert them into a someone who's going to work with you, or they're going to tell you, I'm not really interested. Please leave me alone. You know, please stop contacting me. And so it's to turn all those leads that you get, it's to figure out which ones are real and which ones aren't. And so it's what we call that quick conversion conversation. And you can do different things. I mean, it's giving you suggestions on page 146 of what that's going to be like. Okay. And actually, nowadays, the 33 is now called a 36 touch. It's three times a month. 33 times 12 is 36. So the new, in the newer trainings that we have on the millionaire real estate agent, um, it's not 33 anymore. It's 36. And 12 direct is just, you know, once a month kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, 
So I think everybody, everybody who was in my class last week, I sent you guys the 19 to connect and the 36 to convert. Or did I do those backwards? I think it's 19 to convert, 36 to connect. Um, and so Ray, I can send that to you. Thank you. Newer yeah. info, okay? All right, you guys, I have a one o'clock, one to four training today that I need to jump off and get ready for right now. Um, who would like to be a co-host with me next week? What do, you, what do you need to do? Just help me lead the conversation and read ahead of time and come up with a few points to talk about. Would you like to help me? Sure. All right, thank you so much. You guys have a great rest of your day. I will see you next week if I don't see you sooner. Thank you. Thank you. Where is Thank you the, uh, for your assistance part, today. You were which awesome. Part, which page is? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me tell you again. Next week is October 4th. We are reading pages 172 through 192, just about 20 pages. And we'll be going over the economic model and the lead gen model. 172 to 192. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.